own inflation, volatility in financial markets, financial instability in the regional banks in the U.S. We are having to make policy on best judgment, given the information that uh, we have. And the Correctional Services Department says private security company G4S still insists there was no prison escape from the Mangawung prison, despite overwhelming scientific evidence suggesting otherwise. The prison director of 23 years, Johan Thron, has been fired following the brazen escape of the so-called Facebook rapist Tabo Besta. Homos has more. A facility that has compromised its security system beyond any reasonable doubt. That's how Correctional Services Commissioner Makhoti Tobakhale has described the Mangawung prison that is run by G4S. Our investigation report is pointing to basically a, a lack of security management at this facility. He says G4S stands by its version. G4S uh, has not considered that the body that was found in cell 35 is not the body of Tabo Bester. While the contract with the security company expires in 2026, Tobakhala says they are seeking legal advice on the way forward with the relationship with G4S. Khomza Modise, Eyewitness News in Mangaung. A cloudy Friday in store for Gauteng tomorrow with scattered showers and thunder showers. Joburg dropping to an overnight low of 13 degrees, peaking at 21. Pretoria 14 and 22. For Inaching 12 and 22 as well. Lerato Hufala, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. Hashtag MSW. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honesty, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. Incident. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? This marks the end of my appointment, which was until further notice for this campaign without any contractual obligations in period. Thank you for the platform, MSW. Hashtag MSW. I'm going to press David because I look at his record of the last 923 games, zero wins, four draws and five losses. What then as a nation do we do um, to try and plug this gap? Uh, there's no shortcut. We have to re- respect football processes. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. We won, we won. The game is finished and we are going to AFCON. So we deserve to win, but if you lose then you are very disappointed, you are frustrated and you are angry. SA Football Coaches Association Sports Director Sudesh Singh. We've been doing great work on national duty on the television. But you know, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Bafana has this uncanny ability to put us through extreme levels of joy and pain. <laughs> Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. in their famous victory against the Proteas in Adelaide last year, uh, which eliminated them from the T20 World Cup. Now, the two ODIs scheduled for Willamore Park in Benoni tomorrow.
That's going to be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And also at the Wanderers on Sunday at 10 a.m. are the completion of a three-match series which started back in November 26, 2021, but was then postponed because of the new strain of COVID, which meant that the Dutch players might not be able to return home if the series had been completed. Now, the batter, Quinton de Kock, says that the team is conscious of the slow overrate mistake and also they want to fix pretty quickly fix that mistake easily this weekend yeah obviously it's quite nice um the fact that a lot of the guys got a lot of time out in the middle um and got some form behind their names obviously quite nice i'm just treated like another game i guess um obviously we know everyone knows the importance of these two games um but yeah it's it's like playing another team just gonna come prepared and just come out running yeah obviously we're trying to play aggressive brand of cricket but when i say aggressive I mean, agree, but also very clever in the way we go about things, um, making sure we choose the right options, not just double step and just try hit sixes all the time. It doesn't work like that, especially in the longer format. Uh, we need to be clever, uh, more strategic, how we want to get um, more boundaries in a sense, uh, or build a bigger strike rate. Um, so, yeah, we are trying to, we are it's still a working process for us. Um, obviously, we've seen that we will fail time and time, from time to time. Um, but, you know, it's it's been working for us and the guys are really enjoying it so and it looks like the guys are really coming together for this this new way we want to go about it Quinny, you've been part almost a season of um... yeah um it's been a while since i've played yeah um i can't remember how long but i know it's been a while it could potentially be timber's debut actually um so it's quite a long time ago it's nice to be back it's generally a, a pretty decent wicket um so yeah it's good to be back hopefully so hopefully the rain stays away um, and yeah, we can get down and play some good cricket. I think we pretty much the same, um, maybe a slight, slight better. Um, I think during that game it was just a really, really bad day for us as players and South Africans in general. Um, it was just sad it had to be that game. Um, but I think going even before that we were still playing pretty good cricket and, and now we're still playing pretty good cricket. Um, so we just got to make sure we rock up and not take things for granted. Make sure we come out as, as and you know come out in all cylinders. Yeah, Rob's just obviously just told the boys just um, make sure this that it doesn't happen again. Um, bit of a slap on the wrist. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure we won't do it again. It's not too big of an issue. It's a controllable thing. So it's just a matter about getting out there and hustling as quick as you can all the time. So it's a quick fix. So it's nothing too too stressful about it. All right, let's move on to a little bit of football news now. The former England manager, Roy Hodgson, has revealed that it was a really big surprise to be asked to come out of retirement to manage his former club, Crystal Palace, as they battle relegation from the English Premier League. Now, last week, it was announced that the 75-year-old would return to Sellers Park dugout for the final 10 matches of the season. That was after Patrick Vieira replaced Hodgson back in July 2021, was sacked following a 12-match winless run in all competitions. Now, Hudson has vowed not to seek another managerial job in the Premier League while trying to save Watford from relegation uh, that was January to May last year, which saw him, though, leave after they finished 19th and were relegated to the Championship. Well, I did not expect to be back. I thought that I'd left Crystal Palace already virtually a year ago, and this offer to come back now came as a really big surprise, um, but it's an offer that I've been happy to accept. Steve Parrish was very clear that you know this was going to happen and that he wanted me to, to come in for this period of time to, to take over the reins. And when he pers persuaded me that it was something that they'd really thought through and wanted to do, and uh, they thought that I was the one that they wanted to do the job for this two months, it didn't take much thinking about it at all. And as far as my wife was concerned, she didn't make too many complaints either. And she was glad to see the back of me, I don't know. As everyone knows, it was my boyhood club and it is a club that's always meant a lot to me, but I don't want to really go too much down that down that line. But it does mean, of course, that now when I'm back, things fit in quite seamlessly because people know me and they, they know how I like to work and I know so many of them. So it's not like when you sometimes come into a new club where you're working very hard to remember the names of the people around you. I've accepted that I've retired, as it were, because that's what everyone's been saying. And if I walk down the street, people say to me, are you enjoying your retirement? But 
at the same time, I've never really felt old enough to retire, if the, if the truth's known. I mean, I know that I am. I know my birth certificate tells me I am, but the way I feel doesn't really tell me that. So I suppose there's always been an opening there for uh, a project such as this one, um, whereby I know very clearly what the project is, what the objective is, why I'm there, and, and what's expected of me. Who knows, you know, there might be another one of them that comes up, but the thing is I don't... I don't actively seek them, that's the thing. No one is out there on my behalf looking for these things. I'm purely focusing on the now. There was no discussion about that at all. Uh, I don't know what Crystal Palace's plans are going forward. Knowing Steve and the owners as well as I do, I'm sure they, they've got ideas and got plans going forward. They've asked myself and Ray to do a very specific job work with this group of players and try to make certain that at the end of the season we are still a premiership team and I like it that way. Seventy five years old and going strong, hey Roy Hudson in charge at Crystal Palace. Good luck. Congratulations as well locally. February, March, DSTV Premiership Coach of the Month Award going to uh, the Sundowns coach, uh, Rulani Mkwena. Second time in succession this season. But then Sundowns are going to be locking horns with Cotton Spore in the CAF Champions League encounter on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Mkwena shares his views on what to expect. We've had a very good and important break for us. Uh, we took uh, the liberty of the break to, to manage the squad. We had a couple of players that needed a, a bit more work than others. And so they were on different programs. Um, and then also some players also needed a couple of days off uh, because of the, the number of games that we've played so far. So it's been a good break for us. Uh, there's been good energy since the return. A lot of good work that's been done. And now we, we concentrate to, to play against a, a very good cotton sports side. The results, of course, don't, don't show that, but you can see the, the, the quality in the, in, the, in the team, especially with regards to the attack. Some very, very good players in Waso, uh, Ramses, uh, Dauda, Koholo. These are players that can, that can create a lot of problems for anybody. And then they've got very aggressive uh, fullbacks, and the left fullback, the number 12, Abba very aggressive with a lot of uh, crosses into the box. Mamadou, the, the captain, right back, also very aggressive with number of crosses in the box. They average, they average 15 crosses into the box per match. Uh, they put 25 against us uh, when we played against them in Cameroon. So strong side um, with a lot of potential with the players. And, and we have to make sure that we, we are at our best and we perform very well if we, if we, if we want to win the match. Um, yeah, very important. We spoke about it uh, today in the morning with the players. Um, important for us to finish number one in the group um, because it's got a lot of connotations to it. Um, so we want to finish uh, first. We want to make sure that we, we complete the, the group stages with the same excellence that we've played every single match now. And, uh, you know, the story. Uh, winning is a habit, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's important that you go into the, the knockout rounds with the feeling of knowing how to win and knowing how to win important games. And, and this is this is the mentality that we have to carry into the next match. Marawa Sports Worldwide. This is 947. Music Life. Hashtag MSW. Uh, Mr. Danny Jordan to be... Uh, your guest so that we can pose uh, some questions because uh, uh, we've got uh, things which are not really uh, professional in our national teams. Uh, how can a, a national team coach resign on a, a, a national radio? It tells you that uh, the professionalism it's, it's, it's not uh, up to scratch with our uh, association. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much indeed. We will try to get him on. He knows that uh, we've been uh, asking him to come onto the show as well. He's got to count as the president of the FA, the Football Association, which is the mother body of SA football. I guess David not only could have resigned literally anyway. Could have resigned under a bridge. He didn't have a contract with Safa. Hi, Marao. Uh, 
um, as a country, we've moved from winning the Nations Cup from being in the top 30 um, in the FIFA world rankings to a point where we are using people on freelance basis like David Nodwan. It broke my heart hearing yesterday, you know, so emotional um, when he turned out his recognition yesterday in the studio. So it, it just breaks my heart. I don't know where we're going to as, as, a, as a football, you know, nation. I don't know where we're going to. I've got no idea where we're going to, but it just breaks my heart. And a well-meaning, well-meaning federation would have looked at themselves and, um, you know, critically and, and try to find ways to sort out this mess that we're in as a football playing nation. It's very disappointing. Yeah, disappointment all round, eh? I get a sense we'll chat to him straight after the break, though. But boxing manager as well as trainer Colin Nathan working around the clock to try and secure funding uh, from the government to stage the International Boxing Federation, which is the IBF junior flyweight world title between holder Sibanati, special one on Jinga, as well as the Filipino Reggie Suganob in the Eastern Cape on the weekend of the 23rd of April. Now, Rumble Africa Promotions, otherwise known as RAP, their CEO, Nomfesane Nyatela, wrote to different government departments as well for assistance, uh, but no deal has been concluded as yet from what we've heard. But safe to say that last week, the champ himself, the man who came back, with the world title belt, Unonjinga. I mean, he wrote a very, very painful message on how he's been neglected as a world champion in a country of his birth. I think we've said this so many times on the show that anywhere in the world, if you have a person like Nonjinga in your country and given how young he is and given the potential for him in the future to defend go overseas, fight, come back home, do a title defense at home and to a jam-packed venue. I mean, imagine Sun City Super Bowl, packed to the rafters. You know, it had to take musicians to go to Sun City and pack that Super Bowl. So how about we rally behind our boxers? How about we start to recognize, appreciate and really propel them to where they belong? And we're currently not doing that. Why are we not doing that? I don't know. There, there is clearly a problem. If you remember my conversation last week with Brian Mitchell, Brian said he's, he's quite happy, you know, boxing is in a good space. He was saying where he is and where he sits, everything seems to be okay. You know, the people that were phoning in and saying that they think it isn't okay were not saying what Brian was saying. But that painful message on that neglect kind of touched a very rare, raw nerve. And uh, Colin Nathan was the boxing manager and trainer to the champ himself. Will tell us a little bit more about this and what is to be done. And you can add your voice as well if you feel that from a boxing perspective. On 060-708-0484, 060-708-0484. It is Marawa Sports Worldwide on a Thursday. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. From the 200 megapixel camera to the smooth and multifunctional built-in S Pen, the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra with Vodacom has all the features you love and more. Make it yours today on a 1 gig red core data plan for only 1,149 Rand per month over 36 months. Plus, add the Galaxy Watch 5 e SIM for 19 Rand per month. Available in store or online. T's and C's apply. Further together, Vodacom. Fly Emirates first and business class and look forward to a journey that's as incredible as your destination. Start your holiday with delicious fine dining, impeccable service and comfort that's out of this world. Sip drinks in our A380 onboard lounge, watch a movie and drift into a restful sleep in flatbed seats. Treat yourself to Emirates first and business class. Fly Emirates, fly better. 
checkers, you can celebrate Easter with all the extras, with over a thousand deals in store, like one litre the non ultramel vanilla flavoured custard, any two for 50 rand, save 18 rand, 1.5 litre Clover Crush 100% fruit juice blend, any two for 64 rand, and a 100 gram Lindt Milk Chocolate Gold Bunny for 69.99, save 20 rand. Valid until this Sunday, only at Checkers and Checkers Hyper. Lotto Star introduces Monopoly Big Baller to our live game shows with an instant payout of up to 5 million rand. Bet on different numbered cards giving you multipliers and bonuses. To enter Mr. Monopoly's 3D world, simply bet on 3 or 5 rolls, match the numbers and start collecting incredible multipliers with each roll of the dice. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Monopoly is a trademark of Hasbro and is used with permission. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impumalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800-006-008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Sage gives businesses like Brian Habanas access to the right insights at the right time, reducing complexity and enabling compliance. The quicker you can make a decision by the information through which you receive that, the quicker that decision making comes. Become a Sage customer like Brian and set up your business for success. Visit tax.sage.co.za today. Sage, helping business flow. Sports worldwide. David Lotwan, the SA under 23 national team coach, you are resigning. Yeah, I think the journey is over. Uh, when things don't go well at this level, part of accountability, responsibility starts with me, and I saw you feel that maybe I should give the platform to you know, someone to come in. Yeah. But I'm just shocked that you don't have a contract. I liken you to a Hugo Bruce, and I doubt Hugo Bruce is going around with a piece of paper that is not a contract. He has a legal document in front of him that says you are employed. While one was waiting for a written contract uh, after a tentative verbal, you know, agreement, because to start with, to be honest, and put it out there, but then uh, the written document, you know, never really came for at some point. You were thinking, okay, let me not, you know, go on sure. but as i said you know for me uh, it's more saving the country first hashtag msw hashtag msw all right so we joined on the line right here tomorrow sports worldwide colin nathan boxing manager as well as trainer colin thank you so much for your time thanks for your patience good evening Hey, Rob, great to hear your voice, man. Thanks for having me on your platform and be to all the listeners. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I know you do a, a great deal besides, you know, training your boxers, besides managing them, but also just fighting for their rights and having known Jinga write that very painful message. Firstly, how, how did that touch you, knowing that it comes from a good place, a good space, but also somebody who's extremely young and is a world champion? Yes, and also, I mean, we can assume that he was also taking it to give the South African Sports Awards with no mention of him, which, um, man, that, that was that was hurtful. I mean, yes, South Africa's only legitimate world champion, right? And not even a mention at the South African Sports Awards. That's just yeah. like, there are no words for that. I actually saw that. I, yeah. Now that you mention it, Colin, because, again, where are the advisors? Where are the people that surround the minister? Where are the people that actually put the names down? When they whittle through whatever sporting code it is, and they realize that in how many years, Colin, have we not had a world champion? Never mind a world champion who is as young as Nonjinga is young. And at the SA Sports Awards, not even, like you say, a mention, never mind an award or even an excellence award. Yeah, exactly. Now, I don't know if that post was directed at that, but let's assume it was, right? No mention of him, nothing. I mean, yeah, Mauricio Mtolani, when he lost his world title to Sonny Edwards, was the last legitimate world champion, right? So we went in a space of a year and a half, give or take, without, maybe even longer. Sorry, I'm just trying to think. It was 2000. Yes, we're talking about close to two years without a legitimate world champion. The kid goes into the hometown disadvantage finding uh, uh, Flores, Hector Flores, a massive underdog, and he pulls it off. And not even, as you said, not even recognition, not even a recognition award. I mean, I just, certain things just stun you 
and certain things just shock you, and I feel both. I believe there's been lots and lots, in fact, endless promises that have been made to him. Um, nothing has followed up. Um, obviously, he's not in a good state right now. The, the lack of support is glaring. But the promises, w- w- what kind? I mean, give us a sense here, Colin, of what was promised. Do you remember w- when you come back and you do a little ticket day parade and people welcome you back at the airports, wherever you're touching down, then the ministers or even the MECs of wherever they come through and because there's a, a public platform and because they want the applause and the acknowledgement and they want people to really shout and make a noise, they make promises in that, but those promises are never fulfilled. Give us an example of what those promises were. Okay, so I don't know the merits of the promises. And I mean, that's not for me to open up and disclose. I mean, I would think that the right person to speak to would be Sivanati. But also just to let you know that he's, he's obviously not depressed. He's just frustrated and upset about the lack of support. The kid's the champion of the world. He's, he's in good spirits to defend his belt. But I mean, you know, and I'm hoping now, now that I've got this platform, I'm hoping that the Eastern Cape government get involved in this fight. Because now we, we're, at a, we're at a deadlock with the Filipinos. It looks like we're going to be heading for a first bid. Um, and if that's the case, I really, really feel that we really need support. You know, there was a cabinet reshuffle. We've got a new sports minister. This is the perfect time. If the sportsman is serious about boxing in this country, now is the time for him to get behind potentially having this fight in the Eastern Cape, a legitimate world championship in the Eastern Cape. And I've, got to, I've, got to, I've also got to make mention of this, Robert. I support black excellence. Sure. I really, really do. And Rebel Africa Promotions will be the first black promoter in the Eastern Cape to promote a legitimate male world championship. And Dili Sedanili was the first to promote the WBA world title with, uh, with a female. So I do support black excellence, but I do think that this is the perfect moment for the sports minister to step up and get behind boxing. He mentioned it. You know, even without me mentioning boxing, in his first radio interview when he came into the studio here, he talked about the revival of boxing. And that kind of got a lot of people... Sorry, sorry, Robert, let, yeah. me, let me interrupt you. So don't you think this would be the most appropriate time to get behind the sport and have a legit... Listen, here's another stats for yeah. you, actually. Now I've, got, now I've got your attention and the, and the listeners. The last legitimate world title was in, in March 2016 when Heki Butler lost his 105-pound world title to Baron Rahas, right? That's seven years in this country without a legitimate world boxing title fight. I mean, come on, let's get real. Let's let's get let's get this let's get this going. But what what seems to be the problem? I mean, unpack it for us so that um, whether well, the minister's finished with his his meeting with Safar or not, and I know that he would be listening to the show every single day. Um, he, he makes it his point because he wants to find out what are the people saying, what are the major complaints that are making the rounds out there. But for you to I mean, to call out 2016 in March, and I remember that uh, Butler fight that was here in yeah. SA, what seems to be the major stumbling block? So that's a great question, Robert, and it's, and it's a little bit more complex than me just answering it. Just, but but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you in a nutshell. Promoters in this country are greedy. They're greedy. There's a lot, of, lot, a lot of government funding that goes into these promoters, and they pay the fighters what they should not be paying the fighters. Fighters, you need to remember something. It doesn't matter about a broadcaster, and it doesn't matter about a promoter having a contract with and having a site to you. It matters about the content that you produce. And the content that's being produced has been lacking for quite some time. And that's one of the reasons why I'm very happy that I'm independent on my own, that I do consult for a lot of promoters. I'm in partnership with another boxing promotion, although I'm not a director for Boxing Five. But a lot of these promoters get a lot of funding from governments and broadcast rights and private sectors as well. And they, we're talking about millions here, Robert, and they're not prepared to spend money. So I know the, I know the financial situations with these smaller weight divisions. Um, it's really not a lot of money consider, considering what these promoters are getting, right? So that's, if you ask me my honest opinion, and I might come under a lot of criticism and fire for this, but I'm laying it on the line. That's what I would think. They're just not prepared to put the hand in the pockets and spend the money that that's been presented to them. If they've they been given, if they've been given millions, 
uh, whether it's from broadcasters or they've been given millions from whatever the source is that they get the millions from, then shouldn't there be accountability? Because you, you would find that a lot of that money is public funds. It's from the people that pay. And if it comes through within government institutions, then it's the taxpayer that's paying. Correct, correct. But very rarely you'll get promoters being transparent like that. I mean, even even the figures that are announced on social media from Vegas and stuff, remember those numbers, because of tax implications, are not always the true accurate numbers. So that will never be disclosed. And I agree with you. I think that those kind of that kind of funding for events, there should be transparency. I agree with you one hundred percent. Exactly how expenditures being 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 spent, but it's not. Look, Robert, I mean, I can sit here and mope about the situation. You know, we can, the point is, we've got a legitimate world champion. Let's get behind him. Let's get it going. Let's, let's start making change to the sport. You know, like, I'm all about making change. I don't want to hop on the negativity because we have excellent fighters and talent here in South Africa. And we have talented fighters that can legitimately step up, contest, and win legitimate world titles. So, Let's let's put our focus into building the sport and actually actually getting behind our fighters. Twenty third of April is what I was told was the date uh, that was put down. Is that date still happening? Twenty third of April, no. So there was never. Yeah, you're the second person who's actually asked me that question, and the second journalist as well. That was never ever going to happen. Remember, we're not faced with a situation of a mandatory position with Reggie Suggernob, right? Yeah. So he fought at the end of February, and he has an automatic 45-day rest suspension period, right? So maybe we were talking about that fight in a voluntary position. But that's come and gone. We had five months to do it, and I decided to rest uh, Sivinati because he had an absolute war. And I felt that it would be irresponsible of me to put him back in straight after that kind of fight. So he needed to recover and rest. Now we're faced with the mandatory and also the mandatory situation, the kid from the Philippines, the fighter from the Philippines, and automatically he's on a 45-day rest period. So the 23rd of April was never going to happen specifically for this contest, Robert. Sure. So what then becomes available? Because like you say, it's, it's important for the Eastern Cape uh, to get a fight. Uh, you know, Reggie Suganob, yeah, you, you've just uh, stated right now what sort of uh, problems you're having right there. But if there was to be tabled down, put down in the calendar, Colin, um, of a potential world title fight, and it's in the Eastern Cape, when would that likely be? So we're looking at May, Robert, to okay. be honest with you. I think that's, that's a good time frame. You know, it's a good time frame for, for both parties. Um, I do think, though, we are heading for a first bid. Rumble Africa promotion is aware of this. Remember, we might have another trick up our sleeve with Matram because he's a co-promoter of Sivanati Nochinga. When I say Matram, I'm talking about Eddie Hearn. I haven't even brought that into the equation yet. But right now, my focus is on getting this fight off the ground and making it happen in East London. Um, the Filipinos are not keen to come to South Africa. They want it on a neutral ground. And then they made us a ridiculous offer, which obviously I declined for us to go to the Philippines. I want the fight to be in South Africa. And unfortunately in life, sometimes what you want, you don't always get. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. say this again. I really want this fight to happen in East London. But then contractually, w- w- what does the contract say? Is the champ in charge of where he defends his title? Okay, so it's a good question. So you get um, administratively the number one contender, right, which is Reggie Saganov, which is he fought for a world title and eliminate any one. So he becomes the mandatory contender. Now, we're the champions. So the mandatory contender and the champions parties and both parties can't agree on a fee on who's going to host the fight. Then we'll get down to a post-birth situation. So the the... The time frame for negotiations ended yesterday. I'm almost sure that either today or tomorrow I'm going to be getting a letter from the IBF uh, ordering a purse bid. After that, we've got two weeks for both camps to try and find a medium because obviously the purse bid could be called off. But other than that, if that's not the case, there's going to be a purse bid in place. And how that works is any promoter bidding for that purse bid has to give a non-refundable fee of $5,000 and then come up with a figure with 10% on the figure, and whoever comes up with the highest number wins the purse bid.
Oh, I see. Okay. Now, but I don't know, Colin, for me, it just seems quite unfair where you've had to go to Mexico and you've had to be away from home, hostile environment, hostile crowd that is out there. You, you come back home with the belt. You come back with the world championship belt. And then when it comes to your defense, you then almost have to lose that. So he, he's got at no stage the advantage of a home crowd. He's got no stage, the acknowledgement of a home crowd, the potential. And maybe you can answer this for me. I am quite interested to know is that since he won and since he's come back as a world champion, number one, does he have any further sponsorship to whatever he might have had before? Yeah, I mean, listen, the Eastern Cape Department has got behind him. So I can say that, um, you know, in terms of just also like with regards to no support here. That, that's going to depend on the business aspect of this purse bid. And that's why I'm appealing to the Eastern Cape government and, and, and the sports minister to make this happen. Get behind Rumble Africa promotions. If it comes down to the per, a purse bid, Rob, we need, to, we need to have the funding and we need, we need to have the finance for order for us to win the purse bid and for this fight to be staged in the Eastern Cape. So, so with regards to sponsorship, yeah, the Department of the Eastern Cape has got behind Sibonati. Um, so, so that's covered. But with regards to personal sponsorships, no, not at the moment. Is that strange to you that when you look at world trends, when you see what's happening no, around us? Strange. So, I, I'm going to answer you with a question. Isn't it strange that you never got to mention the South African Sports Awards when Maruti and Talani two years ago won? Yeah, I, I still find it ridiculous. I mean, I, mean, I find it, I, besides being stunned and shocked, I find it baffling. Robert, I mean, you and I have known each other for many, many years. Yeah. And I know I've often seen you at ringside and we often chit and chat about boxing. But I mean, this one just makes you raise your eyeballs and you think, what the F, you know? No, I hear you. I feel your pain. And while we were chatting, I did put out a message to the minister just to double check with him uh, if he is tracking exactly what is happening here on the show right now. It's, it's either him or the people that work in and around him need to know. I mean, this is an open platform. This is a, a public platform. But most importantly, you have a world champion. Anybody, as I always say on this show, that goes out, sings the national anthem, hoists the flag of the country high and returns back being dubbed a world champion needs more than just recognition, needs support. And the kind of support that you're saying the minister should be part and parcel of is not even something you need to be begging for, never mind at an awards event. You know, they could even put him up on a, I don't know, a team's meeting or, or anything like that to say, hey, guy, if we couldn't fly you here, uh, but here you are. The name just did not even enter the Sun City Super Bowl. I know, I know. So... Hopefully the sports minister or, or his advisors are listening to the show. Tell them to mail me or call me and, or, or get a hold of Rumble Africa promotions. But that's, that's the situation we face with. It's a harsh reality. And you said to me, you asked me earlier, is that fair? Like, is that fair that we don't have any homes? Boxing, unfortunately, is a, a very unfair sport. And sometimes it can be very parallel to life and life can be very unfair. But I'm hoping that we can do right by bringing this title, title fight back to East London. I really, really do. This would be like a first of its kind, and I'm really, really pressing for that. So, again, if anyone from the, the sports, uh, the Minister of Sports listens to this, please, someone get in touch with me. Yeah, we'll certainly be pushing those buttons uh, as well, Colin. I want to thank you so much, indeed, for coming on. Uh, let us know if there are any further developments. We'll share those with the listeners. Yeah, great. Thank you, Robert. Thanks for the platform and thank you for the time. Thank Always you. appreciated. Colin Nathan, they're joining us right here on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Yeah. I suppose it borders on crazy, ridiculous, whatever other word. I'll, I'll read out to you after the break what exactly Ononjing the Champ has written because a lot of people I see on social media saying, what exactly did he say? We would love to know. I'll let you know. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. Join the first and only medical aid that can secure your and your family's health in minutes. With Discovery Health Medical Scheme, you can choose from 25 affordable health plans with unlimited private hospital cover, access to 24-7 emergency support, and own your health with the Wealth Fund and get up to 10,000 Rand extra for you and your family for preventative screenings. Speak to your financial advisor or go to discovery.co.za to become a member in minutes. Discovery Health Medical Scheme is a registered medical scheme. T's and C's apply. 
And now I'm taking a short left. There no same old lunch with the family, ne? Never. This Easter. I'm planning to set my table anywhere in Mzansi. Imagine camping with my family next to a riverbank or breakfast with the girls just after yoga at the beach. Hontolamos. Wow. I want to join. Can I bring George? No. <laughs> <laughs> Book now on shortleft.co.za and set your table anywhere in Mzansi this Easter. After all, it's your country. Enjoy it, because nothing's more fun than a short left. Hashtag TravelWise Mzansi. T's and C's apply. Do you with the revamped Suzuki Espresso. Now with exciting new features. Do cool tech with a new generation touchscreen that connects you to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Do class-leading safety, which adds ESP and ISOFIX to the already impressive ABS EBD and dual front airbags. Do fuel efficiency with engine auto stop start technology. Do you in the Suzuki Espresso from only 162900. Contact your nearest Suzuki dealer to book a test drive now. T's and C's apply. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel camera brings you what can only be described as wow worthy resolution. So much resolution, in fact, that you'll be able to zoom, crop, scale, and print your images without losing any detail. Now that's epic. Buy the epic Galaxy S23 now and add the Galaxy Watch 5 from only 19 Rand per month. Available for a limited time only. Galaxy S23 series. Share the epic. Decency supply. Counting Crows, the Butter Miracle Tour, on tour in 2023. Don't miss an evening with Counting Crows live. 14th April, Sunbed Arena, Times Square, Pretoria. Tickets on sale now from Ticketmaster.co.za. Another big concerts experience. Make your Easter exceptional at Pick and Pay. Get 175 gram Lux Beauty Soap, any two for only 24 Rand when you swipe. And finish Quantum All in One Dishwashing Tablet 50s for only 176 Rand 99 when you swipe. Exceptional Easter savings only at Pick and Pay. Valid 27 March to 2nd April while stocks last. T's and C's apply. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Part of the reason David has come through to the show today is that he also wanted to address the nation. David Notwana, SA Under-23 National Team Coach. David, over to you. So I saw a fit to issue this statement on your platform. And my statement uh, goes as follows. I lost some key games in my football career as a player and a coach. We failed in the call of duty to save the country. Therefore, we failed millions of people. The Under-23 is a bridging program for Bafana, but it's treated like a development team. This team spends a long time inactive. This marks the end of my appointment, which was until further notice for this campaign without any contractual obligations in period. Thank you for the platform, MSW. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Next, a guest tonight right here on hashtag MSW. Uh, let me read to you what uh, Sivanati Unonjinga wrote. He says, One day I will tell you about the struggles of being a South African professional boxer who has to go through fight preparations with close to zero support from local businesses, who has to train in inadequate facilities, who has to push through all the negativity from the fight fans who is only recognized when they bring a world title home, who has a sports minister who can't even pronounce their name correctly and who still has to show up because he loves the sport and he has a family to feed. We pray for better days. But for tonight, let me just say good night, world. And that's what he posted, you know, the special one, underscore Nonjing on his Instagram page. Maybe you, who's listening to the show, you don't even know you've got a world champion here in South Africa and you don't even know what he looks like. You can pop into his uh, Insta page, the special one, underscore, Nonjing. <laughs> Please don't ask me how you spell that. You'll figure it out. Now, the national championships uh, kick off with SA desperately seeking world stars. Now, the last time that South African athletes 
as well as the championships went to Bochevstrom. That was back in 2017. Uh, the sport was in rude health, I suppose, boasting, what, four Olympic medals from the previous year, as well as a much-hyped uh, sprint revolution of youngsters. But when the 2023 edition kicked off at the MacArthur Stadium, it will be under a cloud of desperation, having not won a major senior medal since 2017 World Championships. Now, to give us a bit of an update and today's wrap on what we can expect in the next two days, I am joined by Wesley Button, a sports reporter with The Citizen. Wesley, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Welcome to Marama Sports Worldwide. Thank you, Robert. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. I know that you're yeah. out there. Just paint a picture before we get to the nuts and bolts. Yeah, so like you're saying, um, the last few years haven't been great. Uh, we went through a bit of a peak period where we had a handful of world-class athletes and for various reasons, they've just kind of um, fallen by the wayside. And then we saw two of them making a bit of a comeback today. So Wade von Nika ran in the 400-meter heat. Um, you know, last year we saw him in probably his best form since 2017 when he hurt his knee playing a touch rugby game. And today he looked fantastic. It, it was just the first round heat, so he didn't push too hard, but he looked really comfortable. He's clearly over the knee injury, so um, he'll be chasing gold, I think, at the World Champs later this year. And then Akani Sambine came out the blocks and ran a 9.98 in the 100-meter heat. Then he ran a 9.92 in the semis. Got a bit cold later in the day. Didn't run as fast in the final and did win the title. It's his fifth national title. Um, so, we, you know, we've got some young athletes coming through, which is good. But it's really, really good to see two experienced athletes showing their best form again. Yeah, and I think you mentioned two very seasoned runners there, Wesley. Um, I was going to ask you, though, from what you've seen, any potential in terms of, let's say, the so-called no names that have shown some promise? Not, not necessarily. You know, it's difficult on the first day of the national championships because there's a lot of first-round heats, there's a lot of sort of semifinals, that sort of thing. And a lot of athletes aren't really pushing. Um, I think we'll see better performances over the next two days. Um, last week was the national junior championships, and that was really promising. We've got a lot of junior athletes coming through. But today, nobody, nobody really that we don't know. A lot of performances that we expected. Um, I think... The only person who really shone a bit more than we might have thought was Akani Sambine. Yeah, and I'd been tracking as well, you know, performances of a Benjamin Richardson. How did he fare? Oh, he's he's incredible. He he was um, second behind Sambine in the hundred meters. Again, the conditions were not great, so his time wasn't fantastic. But he's a real prospect. He's only nineteen years old. Um, he's already shone at junior level, and he's. he's He's really well built for a sprinter. For a 19-year-old, he's super tall, he's strong, yeah. he's big. Um, and I think he's probably the future of the 100-meter sprint in South Africa. We have a few other guys. Uh, Bradley O'Connor is a, a really talented sprinter. He's unfortunately injured, so he's not competing here. So we have got guys coming through behind Sambine. Um, I think Benjamin Richardson's probably number one spot at the moment. You know, they always talk about wind factors here. Uh, Wesley, was there anything like that today? Or oh, the weather conditions perfect? Uh, they were they were pretty much perfect. Uh, there was a bit of a wind. Um, it was quite warm. You know, in track and field, the athletes like warm conditions. So it was suitable. Unfortunately, I think we're probably going to have some rain tomorrow, maybe even Saturday. So that'll slow things down. Um, but today, was the, the weather was excellent. Let's look at the women, though, because the... You know, 100 meters, we've talked about, you know, the brilliance as ongoing of an Akani Simbini. Um, how did the women fare, though, in the senior 100 meters? Uh, yeah, the, we, we don't have as much depth in, in women's athletics, unfortunately, and I, I can't even really tell you why. Um, I don't know what the issue is. It, we have over the years. It's not like we've never had world-class women. We, we really have. Yeah. At the moment, we, we just don't. Um, Karina Horn won her fifth national 100-meter title. Um, and she ran pretty well. Again, not a great time, but she looked good. Uh, the problem is that Karina Horn's 34 years old, and you would think, you know, a sprinter reaches their peak at around the age of 27, 28. So if you've got a 34-year-old athlete winning the national title in a pretty slow time, that's not good. You know, it indicates that we just don't have athletes coming through. Thames and Thomas finished second. Thomas has also been around for a long time. She ran really well, but what we need is younger athletes. So, um, you know, Kayla Murray, who was, 
the national junior champion last week. She came third. But if we compare it to the performances that we're seeing among the younger men, it's just chalk and cheese. You know, the girls are just not producing world-class performances where guys like Benjamin Richardson, Bradley and Kuana really are. They're, they're real prospects at international level. So hopefully in the next few years, um, you know, maybe it's coaching. I don't, I don't know, but hopefully yeah. we'll see some of the, the women coming through. I mean, it's very disappointing. I think... Uh your honest assessment about that, especially within the women. And we know, Wesley, you and I know that there is an abundance of talent and where that is drifting away or, you know, drifting away somewhere is of big concern. Uh, but I've also just been tracking for the past week. We, we've been having on the show clips coming through from the IOC uh, talking about athletics, eligibility. Um, I mean, other three medalists, the middle distance star, Custer Semenya, you know, effectively being barred from competition through the World Athletics gender eligibility rules. Uh, you know, the javelin queen, Sunet Falun, has retired. You know, the long jumper, yeah. Uluvo Manyonga, is, so, is also serving a, a doping ban. So where does that leave? Is there a continuation? Is there continuity? Are there athletes capable enough at that level and with those big names to take over? No, unfortunately not at this stage. You know, we've had athletes over the last few years who have shown glimpses of promise to be able to compete at that level. But like you're saying, in, in 2016, 2017, we had, we had four phenomenal athletes who were competing against the best in the world in a variety of disciplines. And as good as the talent is, we do have talented athletes. You know, I don't want to brush them aside and suggest that they don't have the potential. They really, you know, maybe maybe one or two of them are going to come through. But when we talk about the level that those athletes were competing at, we're talking about athletes who broke world records, won Olympic gold medals. At that level, I just don't really see a lot of them at the moment. You spoke about Benjamin Richardson. He's a real prospect. Um, Karl Bluchner in, in the shot put also looks like he could do something. But, you know, up until about 2017, we had, we had a period where um, there were a lot of athletes coming through in different age groups. So it looked like everything was set. Like for the next 10 years, we looked like we were going to be smashing it. And we just aren't. A lot of those athletes have just disappeared. A lot of them are getting injured. Again, I don't know if it's a coaching issue. Mm. I don't know if they're pushing the guys too hard. A lot of them are just... They, they're getting such serious injuries that they just, even, even if they're able to compete, we're just not seeing them reach the potential that they have. So it's disappointing. And if we can produce athletes like Casa Semenya, Wade Fanita, Sunet Fulun, um, Luvo Manyonga, we've, we've proved that we can do it. There's definitely the foundation to get it done. Um, and hopefully all the people that were responsible for getting those athletes to that level will find a way to help the, the younger athletes who are showing potential. I mean, he set a 19.82 second personal best in the 200 last season. Uh, that's Ulukolo Adams. Tell me more about his participation. Okay, so Adams hasn't run yet here. He'll be going in the 200 meter heats, which I think are tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to speak poorly about the guy, but unfortunately, a lot of our athletes. And, um, you know, we can also talk about Clarence Munyai, yeah. who clocked in 1969 in the 200 a few years back. They're horribly inconsistent. That's the problem. You know, Lukola Adams is really talented. Nobody can run a 1982 unless they put a lot of work in. So he's obviously making the effort. Um, but at international level, you've got to be able to do it week in and week out, you know, especially if you want to make a name for yourself. If you want to be able to perform at a championship, you've got to do it in the heats. You've got to do it again in the semifinals, and you've got to come back in the final. And unfortunately, both Adams and Munyai haven't shown the ability to do that. You know, they'll have one good run, and then they'll just fall apart in the next race. And we can't have that kind of inconsistency um, if you're going to see them reaching the level that we hope that they will reach. So, yeah, you know, Adams is, a, is, is great. He's a, a phenomenal sprinter. But, you know, honestly, if he's going to take that next step up, he's got to find a way to be able to do it just about every time he runs. Well, Wesley, I think uh, the common thread of what we're chatting about here today from what I can pick up is the word inconsistency. And that word probably fits in when we chat about a Carl Blechnot. I mean, he finished sixth in Tokyo in 2021. Uh, would have yeah. had through a below average season by his own standards as well. Where, where does Carl sit right now? So Carl is, is um, 
Yeah, Carl is very self-aware. He always has been. He's, even as a junior athlete, he was very aware of what his abilities were. And he would tell you before a meeting what he was going to throw, and you'd go out and you'd do it. And I thought that he had probably more potential than any other track field athlete in South Africa. But last year, he just, I don't know, he just didn't perform. We haven't seen him, um, you know, he'll be competing in the final tomorrow, and hopefully hopefully he, he does something. But uh, I don't know what happened to him last year, honestly. The, the shot put is a difficult event to transition from junior to senior level because the, the weight of the shot changes, and you've got to change your technique. And a lot of athletes don't manage to make that transition just because of how difficult it is, but he did. He really did. He came through his first senior season. He struggled a bit. His second senior season, he was great. And then last year, just, I don't know, just didn't make it. Um, you know, I think a lot of the time it might be external factors. The guy's studying, you know, he's, he's probably got other things on his mind. He's a young guy. Uh, you know, his personal life might become um, more important to him than it was before. But if you're a professional athlete and you want to perform at the highest level, you've got to be able to find a way to, to get the work done and work around your personal life and work around your studies and that sort of thing. So I don't know what Carl Bluchner's issue was last year. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to speak to him in a while. But I hope, I really hope that he finds a solution to it because if Bluchner can come through, we're looking at an athlete who has the potential to break the world record. Like he's really, really talented. And like I say, just it, it's all, was always promising for me that he was so aware of his own ability that he could tell you when he was going to have a bad day and a good day. So like that, that kind of mindset is what you want in an athlete. And yeah, uh, let's see how he does tomorrow. But um, hopefully he has a better season than he did last year. Yeah, hopefully we'll have a bigger and broader conversation, you know, just find out where the likes of Anas Ojobodwane are. Uh, but with the, exactly a minute left here, yeah, Wesley, uh, time is ticking. You know, the World Championships are looming large. Uh, country yeah. is looking for its next superstar. What, what can you tell our listeners right now who are listening to this conversation and hearing so much about inconsistency? Is there hope? There is hope. There's absolutely hope. Um, we can fix this. We've got the talent, like you say. We, we've proved that we can do it. Um, this year, I don't really see any new people coming through. Maybe next year before the Olympics, hopefully we do. Um, but I think this year, it's going to be Akani Sumbine and Wade Fanika. I think those are the two athletes that we're looking at for the World Championships, and we might be looking at two gold medals there. So there's promise, um, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll have to give it time and just see if the guys can come around. Right. Oh, man. Oh, man. What a time, Wesley. Thank you so much. Enjoy, uh, you know, the championship out there. And we look forward to chatting to you pretty soon for those updates. Uh, beautiful reporting. Uh, Wesley Button, sports reporter with The Citizen. Thanks, Wes. Thank you, Robert. Anytime. Oh, man. Sure. Yeah, it gives you an indication. And that is why we got to keep our authorities on their toes. We are a sporting nation. Believe it or not. It's just what are the people that have been assigned to look after sport of whatever kind in this country? What are they doing to uphold those standards? What are they doing to minimize the inconsistencies that Wesley was talking about right now? You know, if we're not recognizing a world champion in boxing in South Africa at an SA Sports Awards, then what, what is he even bothering doing? You know, practicing each and every day. But we'll leave with the words... That have been left with us by Wesley to say, we'll get there, maybe soon, maybe one day. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.